interesting. I'm going to be talking about my 10 favorite beers in no particular order of all time. Okay, so let's start with number 10. My number 10 favorite beer is a beer called Coors Light. This beer comes in both cans and in pints and it's available wide, widely available in America. You cannot find it in India. And one of the few imported beers that you may not have been tried, uh, which, that you may not have tried, this is one of the few beers that I'm gonna mention. You probably have tried all of the remaining ones, but I wanted to start with something which I really miss and Coors Light is very good. In America, you also get something called Bud Light and light doesn't mean that the beer is light only it also means that it has less calories so a bud light in america has 70 calories and a Coors light also somewhere in that range 10 20 cals plus minus so for 70 less than 100 calories you have these beers and pints but the way i enjoy Coors light or i used to enjoy Coors light is um, i would actually have a can i still remember this beautiful moment in my, from my life it's a this is a detour but who makes the rules i make the rules so I'm watching an amazing film and I start watching it and I'm like, F my life. This is absolutely brilliant. Who the hell wrote this film? And I realize it's David Fincher who wrote this. I'm watching The Social Network. And 35 minutes into the film, I realize that I need a beer. It's bloody snowing outside. Or it was very cold in America at the time. And I rushed down in just my t-shirt and my pajamas. And I rushed to the nearest shop and I get a six pack of Coors Light. And that did something, you know, the neuroplasticity of the neuro uh, linguistic language, which such a moment evokes is that you resonate with that beer more than ever. And I started liking Coors Light, but I didn't have it much, but it's a great number 10 to have. It's a great beer, you will love it. It has a great flow. It's not very starchy or spicy or difficult to get into. It has a very easy, pleasing, welcoming flow and froth. That's why Coors Light is number 10. Number nine, I probably am gonna give, this one's gonna be a bit of a surprise, but um, I, like, I like stout beers a lot. And this beer, again, if you haven't tried it, you probably will never try it. But this one, surprisingly, shockingly, is Bira Stout Malabar Can. I've done a review for this beer ages back when I was just getting started on beer. And it has a great flow, great, uh, great can, great looking can. The designer of the can also reached out and commented on my video and uh, what's so amazing about it it's a dark beer it's a stout beer it has a really good kick i know nothing about stout beers but i just know that it's very good to taste and i kind of miss it man i would love to bring it back you know so number nine is a can of beta stout the absolute bop of uh, my initial journey um, into strong beers was thunderbolt and Thunderbolt is my number eight. Till date, I compare this beer with a couple of J's. You know the second J? This is a lot like the second J. For all my 420s, you probably understand that. Thunderbolt, it smells rank, but there's an honor in that smell. It has a very, very simple, almost cute, almost classical kind of, um, you know, um, a tag. Now, I, I, I've been using this, um, today, I, today I used, uh, uh, you know, I, I shaved today. That's why I'm looking so bald faced. And um, I, I have this aftershave, which I use, which is very manly and old school. Thunderbolt has a similar vibe. It's very, it's very old school. It's very continental. It's very, it's very territorial in its, in its filament. And, and I think some, for that reason, I think Thunderbolt is definitely my eighth best beer of all time. Probably the best strong beer ever. That's a big thing. You get what I'm saying? That means it's better than a lot of beers which might feature above this, but Thunderbolt is the best strong beer in the world. And which means it's probably better than Hayward's 5000, which is love. I know it's love, it's delicious. It's so, it's so aromatic, it's so Indian. We Indians pride ourselves on um, Hayward's 5000 and, uh, but, in today's list, unfortunately, Havens 5000 is not gonna show up. Or would it? Let's see. Right now, it's not showing up. Um, a bit of a detour. If you are in the state of New Jersey, if you are at a place called Newport, 
um, there's a water body and there are a lot of bars at the dock. Now, when I used to live in the States, I used to like to go to these bars and sit at the bar, sometimes all by myself, order a red chicken burger, you know, like an Angus chicken burger. And I would ask for what they have on tap. And at most of these bars, there used to be IPA beers on tap. I'm forgetting what kind, but there used to be an IPA beer on tap. For those of you who don't know, India Pale Ale is a beer which was predominantly made in India for the East India Company when those rat asses, the Brits, they ruled India. And um, surprisingly, India Pale Ale is, it was never consumed back then in India. And it still is not consumed uh, in India. It has a very caramelized, almost sweet, frothy, almost like a stout texture. If you want to try an IPA, uh, which is similar to what I'm talking about, and if you want to know what I'm talking about, do not go to a bar in India and order an IPA. You'll be disgusted, like not even disgusted, you'll be disgusted. So I'm linking a beer, which was by Brewdog, and I'm going to link uh, a link to my review. When I had that, I, I probably thought best beer I've ever tried. So IPA beers have a special place in my heart, which brings me to my number six. It's also an IPA. It's pro so in the year 2015, I went to America, sorry, Australia. And in Australia, I realized ki bhai, all my life, I've thought I've tried beer and as a beer fanatic, I've been everywhere. But Australia is the first place on earth where I felt, okay, this is justice. You go to a casino and you see 12 beers on tap. You go further to a different casino, you see six other beers on tap. And my friends, I tried about 25 beers and 150 lashes, which is again an IPA, was the best beer I tried there. So that's my number six. If you want to taste the most delicious, most amazing beer in the world, try 150 day lashes. If you're getting a pint, please keep in mind, you're not gonna enjoy it as soon as you open it. You gotta let it settle for a couple of minutes and then you put it in a, in, a, in a nice tall glassy, like a tumbler and you let it sit for five minutes. You let the froths inhale the entire environment and then you have it and then you have five more. That's how you have 150 lashes, my buddies. Fifth beer is gonna be a shocker because I haven't reviewed this beer on my channel. This beer is called Murphy's. And what do I say? I've had Murphy's less than four times in my life. And still, I think it's the best. If you want to get a Murphy's, the last Murphy's I had in India was probably at um, uh, back. It was probably, okay, I saw a can. It used to sit in Defense Colony, Tekas, but now you don't find Murphy's there. And the can there used to be for like 400, 500 bucks. It's kind of difficult to source. You can try Khan Market. Or you can go to ITC and sit at the coffee shop and pay a thousand bucks for a can for it. Can for it. The can is like 500, 550 um, ml. It's a, why do I recommend Murphy's? It's a stout, it's black, it's dark, it's robust, it's raw. It's very um, almost caffeinated. It's not watery, it's thick, it's gada. It's, it's, it's a real man's beer. It's, it's, no, it's no pee artist. So yeah, definitely recommend it. Number four, I'm gonna eat my words. Kingfisher Storm is number four. Why? I don't know, man. Something about Kingfisher Storm. I I, I don't know. Uh, it's it's just outstanding. It it just it just I don't know, man. Like a 650 ml bottle of Kingfisher Storm will, you know, give me a room full of people, and give me a 650 ml bottle of Kingfisher Storm. And then give me two more. In fact, you can do that with any of these other beers I spoke of. Forget about it. Me on beer is a different animal. And that's why I effing love beer. And I'm very upset because now that I'm getting on in years, it's becoming difficult to appreciate beer. Like I just don't enjoy beer the way I used to. So that's a bit sad, I know. But fuck sadness. Enjoy Kingfisher Storm. It's worth the money. Third best beer of all time is the Kingfisher Green Can. Absolutely, absolutely paint patented godliness. Um, although this is my third um, best can, I, I don't I don't give it the first place because you don't enjoy it from, from the get-go. 
you, it takes a bit of time to get assimilated in your system. Um, it's not an easy customer. Uh, and the biggest criticism I have of Kingfisher Green, it's a bit pukey. Thunderbolt is also a bit pukey and Kingfisher Green is also pukey. Number two is gonna be a shocker, Heineken. Heineken, Heineken, Heineken. Whether I like you or not, I like you a lot. Your, you, Heineken you used to taste very different way back in time. You used to taste completely different in 2008, 2010. And then somebody came and just messed you up, man. You were never the same. You became an awful drink. Heineken is my second favorite beer of all time. And still, I effing give it just six on 10. But the amount of life I have lived with Heineken is enough for it to sail above and be everyone's bop. Heineken, you are probably life itself. You're not perfect, but I have a zest for you. I have a zeal for you. I have a goal for you. I have this liking for you. And, and the fact that you're on this list is the truth of this particular top 10 list of beers. If I had two bottles of this beer, I promise you there would be nothing more sexy than me downing those two bottles and then speaking about how I feel and probably throwing up and then speaking and showing that all on camera, video getting probably dislodged and banned. Foster is the best beer in this effing world. There's no beer that compares to Foster. I don't give a S one. I don't give a shit what anyone says. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Foster is the best beer in the world. And if you don't, if you don't appreciate Foster, if you thought it was bitter and all that, guess what, man? <laughs> I think, I think for a lot of us men who have been a bit, for lack of a better word, not very manly and not very alpha and, and a bit effeminate, I think beer gives us wings. And I cannot think of any uh, more you know, um, freeing beer than Foster for my youth, for my 27, 28, 29, 30. These three years of my life, the best years of my life. Yeah, man, my late 20s, Foster was it, baby. And people would, you know, I, I would go to my friends' houses and they would keep an eight pint of Foster stacked just for me. And I, I've had so much beer in my life and I used to be so fit back then the people would be shocked when they would see me consume 10, 15 uh, bottles a night of, of pints, you know? They'd be like, dude, this guy doesn't stop. I could have six cans on a, on a normal average night. And having six cans of Foster, there's a reason I call myself, ah, I'm, I'm boasting now. It's not about me. This is about what beer is the best. So yeah, <laughs> bye man, I hope you enjoyed this list. I know it's a bit random, but who makes the rules? I make the rules, it's my channel. I hope you appreciate this, peace.